Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. I recently stumbled across some Bigfoot footage that I believe is worthy of some consideration, which is relatively rare. It was uploaded by a YouTube channel called Gulf Island Rock, and I share it with their kind permission. First, I'm going to give a little bit of context, then I'll show the footage, then I'll show the witness's statement about the footage, and then I'll give my take on the matter. The footage was taken on Vancouver Island in August of 2013. A couple took the footage near a town called Port Renfrew in British Columbia, Canada. Port Renfrew has been called the Tall Tree Capital of Canada. They were leaving Port Renfrew when they stopped at a scenic area because they are always on the lookout for unique hiking paths. On foot, they crossed a shallow stream, and this is what they saw on the other side, at a range of 100 feet. And I want to let you know that I'm not going to edit or shorten the footage, or the videographer's afterthoughts on the film. I could make them a little shorter for the sake of time, but I think it's prudent to show the footage and discussion of the footage in the precise state in which it was initially presented. The clip of the creature is two minutes long. Okay. Now this gentleman is one of the two witnesses who were present that day. The woman who was filming him is the one who actually filmed the creature in 2013. And I want to show it exactly as it was originally uploaded, as it was intended. It's a little less than six minutes long. Again, the footage was shot in 2013, and this statement was made in 2020. Describing what we saw back in August 2013 on our drive back from Port Renfrew. So this is going to link in with uh, Wendy's uh, Bigfoot video, which we think could have possibly been a Bigfoot. We leave the uh, decision to you guys. So um, back in August 2013, Wendy and I were driving back from uh, Port Renfrew, our very first trip ever to Port Renfrew. And uh, Wendy loves to hike. Mm -hmm. So uh, And there's a lot of creeks mm -hmm. and streams little rivers flowing beside the road where we were driving and uh, she says you know why don't we go for a little hike beside one of those streams so uh, we pulled down off the side of the road we walked down the stream and the stream was quite nice it wasn't flowing very much because it was very dry uh, dry summer of course and uh, very little water going through the stream so you could actually walk across the stream to the other side and what we could see was probably a, a deer trail or an animal trail and Wendy, being adventurous, she says, why don't we uh, 
go in a little ways into the forest and uh, go for a little hike. And uh, I, I really was kind of reluctant, but anyway, I was following her and she had her camera. I always bring my camera everywhere I go. Unfortunately, this time it was either the camera chip that was full or my battery was dead. So I left my camera in the vehicle and I really wish I would have had my camera with me and it was working at the time because maybe I could have even shot a longer video of what we saw that day. So. So we got into the forest about 200 feet. I'm guessing it was about 200 feet. And we could hear branches breaking ahead of us. So we're thinking, okay, maybe there's a deer or something up there, or it could be a bear, it could be a mountain lion. And uh, Wendy was ahead of me. And uh, she turns around and she points. And I looked up into the distance, way in the distance, it was about 75 to 100 feet ahead of us. You could see something in the distance. It, at first I thought we thought it was a bear, but it seemed more bipedal. So it seemed more upright. It, it appeared to have kind of a conish type head. So you watch the video and you decide. I know there's a lot of skeptics out there. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what we saw that day on our little hike in the bush <clears throat> near Port Renfrew. Um, there was actually kind of a musty smell, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. It wasn't strong. I would say it was kind of subtle. I don't yeah. know if bears stink. I mean, somebody says, oh, it was a black bear. I don't think it was a black bear. I've seen black bears before. No, it wasn't black. It didn't. It was, seemed quite big. And uh, she's looking through the camera and zooming in on this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it from a distance. But it appeared to be quite big and it seemed to have shoulders on it. That's what it looked like to me. So she titled it uh, Bigfoot Sighting near Port Renfrew. But underneath you can see possible Bigfoot Sighting she's written. So mm -hmm. this video is going to link into that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, watch the video, Bigfoot Sighting near Port Renfrew. Tell us what you think. I'm just telling you mm -hmm. what we saw that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were lucky enough we could actually get across the stream because it was, you know, barely flowing. And uh, this is what she captured on video that day. Thank God Wendy had her camera. The reason she's put the video on just now, and she didn't put it on back in 2013, is because Wendy did not have a YouTube channel back then. Mm -hmm. I had a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and this is her video. This is her old camera she shot it with. And uh, maybe with her new camera, she would even have a better zoom lens with this, uh, with this Canon. So during the process of moving into our place here, uh, here on the north end, her chip got misplaced during the move. So she lost this camera chip, which this video was on. So it's lost for several years. She just re relocated, she just located just, the video. Just Just it. located the video, thank God, the, the camera chip with the video yeah. on it. And uh, she's looking through, she says, oh, Joe, look at this. This is that Bigfoot video mm -hmm. we shot back there. So she put it on her YouTube mm -hmm. channel. It seems to be getting a lot of views. Most of the time I see thumbs up. There's mm -hmm. gonna be some thumbs down because there mm -hmm. are skeptics out there, but please leave your comment and tell us what you think of mm -hmm. this video. We're not 100% sure of what we saw that day. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a bear walking on its hind legs, but mm -hmm. to me, it mm -hmm. didn't seem like a bear. And it's, and, and to her as well, and it disappeared. It just, <laughs> that's why she stopped mm -hmm. videotaping. And once it got out of sight, we got out of sight. Yeah. We left fast and we were quiet. We were very yeah. quiet. It didn't yeah. hear us, thank God, whatever it was. Because we didn't know what it was. We didn't I was, know what it was. Yeah, I thought, oh my God, it's, so it's you decide on the video and uh, like I say, leave your comments. And I, I find the comments interesting, whether they're the mm -hmm. skeptics out there dissing it or the uh, people that are giving it thumbs up. Mm -hmm. All right. So anyway, mm -hmm. thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I want to let you know that uh, I do believe in Bigfoot. Wendy believes mm -hmm. in Bigfoot. And um, there's been a lot of sightings on Vancouver Island. It is a hot spot on the Big Island, especially on the Pacific Rim, on the West Coast and, and these areas, and even in the Cowichan Valley and stuff like that. So. Uh, you watch and uh, subscribe and uh, enjoy Wendy's videos. She's always uploading uh, interesting stuff in here, mostly pertaining to gardening. But luckily that day she happened to capture whatever she did on mm -hmm. video. And yeah. maybe you can tell us what it is. You and Bigfoot experts out there. We're not Bigfoot hikes. experts. <laughs> We're not Bigfoot experts, okay? So anyway, yeah. thanks for watching. Like and subscribe uh, to Gulf Island Rock and watch the, the video. She'll put a link to the video. Uh, that she shot that day mm -hmm. back in 2013, seven years ago. We were just going out. Gulf Island Rock is not a Bigfoot channel. They simply seem to record and upload 
little memorable snippets of life. They upload the kind of stuff that was the internet's initial intention. I don't think they're after views. They made no attempt to charge me for permission to use, or anything like that. And I'm no expert on body language, or reading facial expressions. And I don't think that science is particularly genuine. For example, if he was depicting a fear expression, maybe he's camera shy. Or if he was depicting anger, how would we know that he still isn't angry about the guy that cut him off on the highway? Just as an example. A polygraph can verify truth around 90% of the time, but that doesn't help the 10% very much. I guess what I mean to say is that I've never found a strict correlation between people who appear honest and actual honest people. So I tend to take the demeanor of the witness with a grain of salt. But that being said, I don't see anything here to indicate fabrication or an ulterior motive. But of course, I guess that's how someone with an ulterior motive or fabrication would try to appear. So it's kind of a moot point. So I guess the question becomes, what are we looking at? Well, I see an upright figure, hair clad, the frame is zoomed in on the subject, and the camera is quite steady, which is difficult to do when zoomed in. It sure looks sizable. It interacts with the foliage. Some people have pointed out that there is a fabric end here, and they've claimed that the subject is simply a person covered in a sheet, or maybe a dirty wool blanket, I guess because of this abrupt ending right here which certainly could be the case, though I've heard from many sources that the alleged creatures have an undercoat and overcoat. That is, a thin layer of hair or fur with a longer layer on the head and shoulders. No doubt as a precaution against a rainy environment, just as gorilla, orangs, and chimpanzee have. I've even heard people say that the alleged Sasquatch take the rain deterrent one step further by hooding the nose like a person instead of flaring out like an ape. But that's neither here nor there. Gorillas seem to manage in the rain just fine with a flared nose. So regarding this line, all the great apes, except us, have a mane-like plume around the shoulders, to some extent. Even humans have a variation on that. But you can see it here in this lowland gorilla. But I think it's most notable in the orangutan. See how the fur ends abruptly, with thick distinction points? And I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Look how unreal this appears. Not only does it look like faux fur, but it looks like whoever made it didn't even do a good job. It looks so baggy and unform-fitting, like furry pajama pants. Imagine this from behind, and two or three hundred pounds larger, and gray, and it's not entirely unlike what we're looking at in the footage. And here's a decent picture of a gorilla. If an image of this quality came from North America, I guarantee you people would say this is a cutout, which of course it isn't. I don't know. The subject seems large, it manipulates and interacts with the environment around it, and you could ask, why didn't the videographers approach? Well, someone politely asked that question on the original post. Quote, Seriously, what a joke. Okay, why didn't you just walk up to it while recording? Grats on convincing the most skeptical of YouTube critics, but I'm not buying it. Okay. To which the gentleman in the video responded, Are you serious? Walk up to it? No thanks. We were approximately a hundred feet away, and we were not about to put our lives in danger. Trust me, you can easily say that here, but I guarantee you would have been freaked out like we were if you spotted something that you were not quite sure what it was. What I would tell the person who asked that question is that, it doesn't matter if it's a Bigfoot or not. It's never wise to startle or approach big animals, or crazy people for that matter, if that's in fact what this was. And not only that, but of course getting closer to it would likely make it flee sooner, and then they would lose what little glimpse they already had. I get so many written reports like this. Usually one, but sometimes several witnesses, who observe a large hairy mass somewhere between 50 to 200 feet away. They say it seems to be built like an ox, though an ox it is not. And then as undramatically as the sighting begins, the creature ambles off. And back when I first started compiling these kinds of incidents, I always thought, I wish they had a camera, why didn't they have a camera? Well, a camera is not quite as useful as it may seem. This is what you get, and it's less than definitive. I don't know. 
I've said this before too, but I'll say it again. I don't really like analyzing footage. Humans are extremely clever little beasts. We can imitate just about anything. And just because the subject can be mimicked, doesn't mean that the subject as an entirety is a farce. And by the way, if Bigfoot is in fact a real flesh and blood creature, then it is hallmarked by its cryptic nature. And inarguably, a cryptic culture as well. In short, if these things are real, why on earth would anyone maintain that they'd be easy to film? Many animals are hard to film, and I'm not sure animal is an entirely accurate word for whatever these things are. At least, not a specific enough word. Not to mention the inherent pitfall of trying to film something that is generally shaped like a human. Therefore, the skeptic can always say that it simply is a human, which to some degree, or inarticulate definition, it very well may be. One thing I kind of like about this report is the length of time that passed between the sighting and what I've heard other witnesses call dealing with it. This is something I read about often. A lot of people will see something distinctly abnormal, something that doesn't make sense, and they'll put it out of mind until they're given good reason to reevaluate the memory. Sometimes this lapses hours, days, years, or even decades. And it's easy to see why people may do that, right? Realizing that everything you know is wrong, and that you're likely being lied to, is not an easy thing to wrap your head around. Especially if your immediate expectation is to have a lovely time with your family, right? Because how many vacation days do we actually get? Do you want to waste them in a fetal position ranting and raving like me? I think it's important to try and look at stuff like this objectively. Well before we can even attempt to accomplish such an absurdly preposterous notion, let's look at the definition. An objective view is a view not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. You know, that's hard. That's a hard thing to do. Nearly impossible, some would say totally impossible. Objectivity has perplexed some pretty brilliant people. And I try to look at everything objectively, but sometimes it doesn't even seem to be worth bothering. Here's an example of why objectivity is more or less a farce. What do you see here? A table and a chair? Well, sure, you could say that, but I could say you're wrong. I could say it's furniture indicative of a cruel and oppressive society where some people have nice things and some people have no things. Or I could say it's the opposite. It's indicative of a society where people are comfortable and stable enough to produce beautiful things, to craft quality items as part of a healthy economy. Maybe I'm freezing. I could say it's wood for a fire because I'm cold and going to die. I could say the damn thing is a nuisance, a dust collector that I've been trying to sell. Or I could say that it's priceless from a point of nostalgia. Or I could argue that the significance is not even in its form. I could say it's a message. A message that we live in a society that is functionally designed for us to sit down and do things that require a level of focus. A level of focus that is so outrageously intense that we literally have to be elevated and still for long amounts of time. Because if you think about it, that was a fairly preposterous notion for a good chunk of human history. Even the Greeks and Romans weren't big on writing. Most functions, like education, politics, and law, were conducted orally. And even the stuff that was written was designed to be memorized more so than read. That's why everything had a poetic flair, which remained that way as far as the ballads of the Middle Ages. Universal literacy is a surprisingly new concept, and I think our ancestors, from way, way back in the day, way back in the day, and even just back in the day, would be absolutely appalled at how much time we spend being still, looking at words and letters, struggling to make sense of their impact on our lives. You can say this is a table and a chair, but that's only a tiny fraction of the truth. There are, at a bare minimum, two requirements for an observation to be made, that which is observed and an observer, and the object in question's identification is entirely dependent on the observer more so than what it actually is. Is this a bottle of water? Sure, but to some, it's a slow death by plastic compounds leaching into your body, a flood of lethal petrochemicals. Yet, it's salvation for someone out there who's dying. And there is someone out there right now whose life could be saved by this. Or at least, prolonged for a little bit. To some people, 
This is gross, because it's not Fiji. Ice Mountain happens to be my favorite brand of water, and believe it or not, that actually has upset people in the past. Maybe this isn't a bottle of water, maybe it's a debate. An invitation for conflict. What I'm trying to say is that objective identification is sketchy and controversial, even when the object is literally defined. So when the object you're trying to, quote, objectively identify, is not only unidentified, but unidentifiable, then God help you. Because that's when you get the real circus. Objective identification is dependent on the past, present, and future. The objective identification of this figure may shift dramatically and quickly in the years to come, depending on what and when evidence comes to light, if it should at all. To some people, this is a man in a blanket. To others, this is a known animal. And to others still, this is an unknown animal. But of course, unknown is its own headache. To me, this is unidentifiable. Though credit where credit is due, I receive a great many of reports that describe a large mass of fur that quickly shambles off after remaining motionless. And that's basically what was captured on film. And for the people who watched this and flexed their fingers to poo-poo on this guy, I always find it fascinating when I upload a video about someone who didn't have a camera, and people say, why couldn't they film it? And then every once in a great while, someone does film it, often at great risk, expense, and effort, and then the same people say, of course you can't see it, it's too blurry. Well, what do you want? If Bigfoot is real, it wouldn't be Bigfoot if it was easy to film. Then it would just be another creature in North America. See? Objectivity. Life follows curious patterns. I find it intriguing that something that is so difficult to record also happens to be so difficult to define. Anyway... This upload was kind of impromptu. I just stumbled upon the footage and thought it could be an example of both the large and small aspects of the conundrum we find ourselves in. Because the whole Bigfoot phenomena really is a conundrum. I've spoken with numerous people who claim to have encountered something very abnormal. I don't think these people are fools, and I don't think they're lying, so what's left? Just a fuzzy mass in the trees, I guess. But most importantly, what do you think this is? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you like what you see, and as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.